Hello everyone and welcome to our new episode of the Expat Career and Lifestyle podcast. This is Dominika, your host, and today I have a very special guest from the Netherlands, Ute Limacher Libor. She is the founder of Ute's International Lounge. She is an expat for a long, long time and she helps international families to navigate challenges and then adapt to international life in different countries. Hello, Ute. Hello, Dominika. Good morning. <laughs> hello, hello. So thank you for being with us uh, today. Please tell us more about your experience, how your international life started and what, what are you doing? Well, thank you, first of all, for inviting me, Dominika. It's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, you already said a few things uh, that I'm uh, running my own business. It's uh, Uta's International Lounge, where I help internationals um, yes, adjust to the new place, understand the local culture and all the cultures that are involved in their international life and uh, languages. I am uh, myself a multilingual, multicultural, lifelong international, so I've never lived in my parents' passport country, which would be Germany. So far, we never know, maybe this will come, but uh, so far it never happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm uh, a mother of three, and I have a dog, of course, also a, a husband, a partner. <laughs> um, I have many hats, wearing many hats, like many of us do, and uh, yes, I'm constantly curious and eager to learn person. I think this helps quite a lot. What I'm doing professionally, I said it already, uh, what I, I offer these services in different languages, which is uh, my, my thing, because I, I like using all my languages, which is uh, Italian, German, English, of course, Dutch, French, and a little bit of Spanish now. Mm -hmm. Swiss German, but this doesn't doesn't happen too often. <laughs> so yes, my story. You were asking about uh, the background. Well, I am a trained, actually, um, linguist. I was lecturer at the University of Zurich for Italian historical linguistics for many years. Uh, researcher. I did my PhD and my post PhD in uh, in philology. Mm -hmm. um, but I've uh, always worn many hats, so I was also a teacher, I worked in a gallery, in an art gallery, um, so all that combined. I did a training as a counselor and coach, and uh, so I might say I'm a multi-potentialite. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the term from Emily Wapnick, <laughs> there's a nice uh, t uh, TEDx talk about this. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm always eager to learn more. I'm constantly learning, studying, researching. So it's never ending. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's a little bit my, my journey. Yeah, so it's like never ending, yeah, never ending learning and never uh, ending improving, improving yourself and, um, yes. and, your, and your life. Yes, so yeah, it's very interesting that you, uh, that you have never lived in your, uh, in your home country, uh, country Germany. Um, yeah, but tell us more. So how did you how did you manage because you lived in different countries? And so how did you manage those uh, those transitions like on your personal personal side? And also how did you um, did you re reinvent your career or your business every time every time you moved? because you did different different peaks? No. Yes. Well, um, yeah, I grew up in Italy in Northern Italy. And uh, I moved when I was 18, first time from on my own. Mm -hmm. That was harder, I think, because it's the first time that you, you uh, move to a place, you're completely on your own, and you have to figure everything out yourself. This was a big step. Uh, the language was different. I knew a little bit of Swiss German, but not that much. So the language was a little bit a, a challenge, but I liked it. So I just took the plunge. And uh, another thing, well, I used to um, study in Zurich and there is not, uh, there are no campuses like in uh, universities in the UK, for example. So I lived on my own with an old lady, then with other students. So it's really getting into the real life and uh, trying to survive, right? <laughs> Which was, as I said, a challenge, but it was very interesting to find out what you can do when you're 18 years old, first time abroad, <laughs> Uh, navigating in, in not known waters. 
So, um, and I did this over and over again. I moved every two, three years, which was, I think it's this uh, typical expert or international's itch that I had. Uh, although I moved always in the same area or then to France as well, and then a, a moment to, to Italy and back um, on my own. Me, myself, and I, <laughs> for study reasons, and uh, then I did um, get this job at the university. I worked there, and after marrying my husband, who is Swiss German, we uh, transferred to Italy for my work, and that would be the kind of repatriation, right? Because it was back to the country where I grew up in. But I didn't move to the same area. I moved to Florence. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a different way of living there. It's a little bit different from the northern side of uh, Italy. The products, of course, after 16 years, uh, it's different. I didn't expect anything to be like when I left. Mm -hmm. So I think this is uh, the most important thing. You just enter like it's a completely new place and you discover it as a tourist and then you get used to it. But of course, I, I moved there for work and I had already uh, connections with locals and with my new colleagues and other researchers and universities that I uh, collaborated with. So that was um, quite helpful. So doing this in advance in order to prepare yourself and to know where you have to go, when you have to go where and where you find actually what you need to live there was very useful. Um, I was the sole breadwinner. So mm -hmm. my husband was the accompanying partner. Uh, which was quite useful because after a year I got my, my son who was born. So I was very happy that he could take care of my son while I was working. And we did this for three and a half years. So I think it was more my husband who had to adjust, but he did this very, very well. I must say I'm very proud of him and of my son. And that was great. Then... Um, during my studies before, I also moved um, several times a bit to France and then to Italy, back and forth. But these were always uh, shorter periods of time. So you go with the mindset, oh, I'm going, I, I uh, discover, I take everything I can, and then I go back. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a little bit like a prolonged vacation, if you want. And I think it's different. If you move really and, and you... Uh, cut the bridges with what you had before, it's much more uh, changing for your life. So after Italy, then we moved to the Netherlands. We applied both for jobs a little bit all over Europe, and it was a bit of one who was going to get the best um, offer, and it was my husband. And we were very glad uh, that we found this, because it meant after many years that we had uh, projects. Uh, when you work in academia, you have... Um, Yes, contracts that go off maybe three, four years, and then you have to refine another one and work on projects. So it was very unstable. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the move here, we became more stable, which was great. It was the first time in my life that I really had this situation. Okay, I can stay actually, which was also a bit frightening, I must say. We're living now here uh, for the 13th year. We moved here in 2005. Um, which was not easy for me to understand that we won't move um, after three or four years, but we will stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Personal for my career, well, when we moved here, uh, I became stay-at-home mom uh, within 48 hours. So the move to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And uh, realizing that after uh, applying to different universities and uh, companies that I wouldn't be able to continue my career that I had before, that was a big thing for me. That was the most difficult thing to accept. Um, but then after my twin daughters were born, a year later, um, I decided to take a step back and to really focus on my family and to, to find out what I can do next. And it took me a few years to find out what I wanted to do. So um, I started learning new skills, learning Dutch. I collaborated at a project at the Huygens Institute in uh, The Hague. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. which was very eye-opening. So I got to know how uh, people work here, what is the working environment, uh, how you behave and how you speak up and how meetings are done. It's very interesting and I'm always keen to learn. So that was uh, my thing. Um, but I also studied to become a counselor and coach. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did that very passionately. I got back to a study that I did only for two years. That's on psychology. And then I mixed this all up and I helped. I did uh, volunteer work. So you can say it's like a salad of, of different experiences. Yes, that I mixed and that I combined in a way that serves me. Mm-hmm. Until then I came up with what I'm doing now. Mm. Yeah, so you connected like all your experience and like your passions and uh, and skills, yeah, to yeah to find yeah. to find your career. Uh, yes, yeah, so like based on uh, on your experience, what can you advise to someone who is like moving abroad and who is looking to build uh, a, a career or even uh, even a business abroad? So how how to start? What will be like the, your advice about the first steps? To, to take okay the first steps I would even say you you have to take them before you move mm-hmm. to really inform what your possibilities are do you need a visa for example or um, how long are you going to stay if you are on an assignment because your, your partner will stay there only three years will you be able to find something or to build something up uh, within this time frame that you have Uh, So be very well prepared. (laughs) So I see many who just go for three years, maybe to one place, and then they study something, you know, they hone some skills, learn a language, and then take this in their backpack to go to a new place uh, and build something up maybe in the second, third, fourth place that they um, move to. Of course, if you move and you want to pursue your career, make sure that you have enough of connections. I had some, but then um, several situations changed and it made it impossible for me to, to go ahead, um, which, is, which was very daunting, disorienting. And uh, I mean, it, it served me in the end because I, I <laughs> learned how to find other ways to still go where I want to go or to find out that maybe it's not this kind of path, but the other one, uh, but it takes time and uh, perseverance. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I would recommend is to be proactive, not to expect that anyone is looking for you, that anyone is doing the hard work for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you come to a new place like a white page. Mm-hmm. Yes. No one, they may know your name. Maybe they can also pronounce your name, which is not always the, the, the case. Um, they may know where you come from, but uh, you have to tell over and over again what uh, your interests are, what you would like to achieve, uh, who you need. This asking for help is something that we really need to be able to do. Um, and knowing what kind of help we need. Finding this out is a journey. Sometimes we think we need a job, but this is not uh, clear enough. What kind of job, when, and how many hours? Um, Do you work in the weekends? Do you want to travel or not? Do you want to start your own business or do you want to work for someone nine to five or yes? Mm -hmm. So being very clear about what um, serves you and what is possible for you and your family, if you have a family or with your partner in the place that you live. Maybe you live in a place where you cannot travel that much because you have every time you always need a visa to get out and in Um, or that uh, your children need you more. Um, Do you want your children to to grow up with maybe a nanny or something? That's fine if if that's okay for you. Uh, If you don't want that, then you have to adjust accordingly to the situation of the family. And this is actually what I do also with my clients. I never consider only the person with her needs or his needs, but the whole family. How are the children doing? What about the partner? Because sometimes you assess the situation at the beginning of the journey, of the international journey, but it can happen that after a year, two, three, four, 10, 15, Mm -hmm. you 
change the expectations and you change also your view of the life. So I, I say it's very important that everyone is in the same boat on, on the same page, whatever metaphor you want to use. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's different, for example, when you are moving alone or your own, uh, so you can have like different vision and different goals. And when you are moving with, with the family, you have, to, you have to think as a whole family, not, not like only one, one member of, of a family, but you have to think like, like, you have to think like um, having like a big vision for, for, uh, for everyone. And um, I also like that you said that uh, it, it's important to be proactive, knowing what you, uh, what you want and um, what kind of questions uh, you, have to, you, have to, you have to ask when you are looking for a job or um, doing a research or just gathering the information about, yeah, about the move. So this is very, very important for, uh, for expats. Yes. Yeah. Uh, then um, what I am also interested in is about how to craft an international um, identity or how to be uh, like in peace with your international international self because uh, sometimes when you uh, for example when you move to a new country uh, you are impacted by a different uh, a different culture or you are coming back to your home country so you can feel confused because you don't know exactly where do you belong so how to build craft or how to connect with your uh, international uh, international identity which is very important for expats for internationals or even for digital nomads who are moving um, who are moving very often to different different places mm -hmm. well um, actually identity is not something that is constant yes, mm -hmm. we have, it, it changes constantly because we we talk with people we interact with people from different backgrounds so we we shape our identity constantly and I think this is the first thing that many forget they say, well, I am, or they link identity with culture, with nationality, with a place. They say, I belong to a place, or I am German or Italian or whatever. Uh, whereas uh, you, are, you become a little bit tinted with all the people and all the cultures and languages that you get in contact with which is not a scary thing and I realize that for many people who are more centered of oh well my identity is um, I'm German I don't know Munich <laughs> Oktoberfest that's related to the tradition of life there um, and then they feel disoriented when they are somewhere else because expectations are not met um, values are different uh, traditions are different <laughs> the climate is different, everything changed, and then they think they are losing their identity, but it's not about that. It's, it's more about gaining more flexibility in your identity. And I think this is a great plus when we are in this journey. And this is actually what our children who grow up the same way, my children grow up abroad as well, like I do in another country, uh, but uh, they, they make the same experience. And I think it's, it's a huge plus. And fixing too much on how my extended family lives or was or thinks the values that they have and trying to continue these at all costs might be narrowing down what we actually with an international life want to have a little bit expanded. Mm -hmm. So being more flexible and inclusive about uh, the otherness. And I always say, uh, also in my talks and workshops, when I talk about international childhood or life uh, abroad is, uh, we're not only, we're also. So if someone says, well, but you are not that Swiss, you're not that Italian, you're not that German, mm -hmm. and they try to put these boxes, very yeah. tiny boxes. <laughs> I always, I don't like boxes and labels in general. Mm -hmm. But I say, well, you know, my box needs to be very colorful, <laughs> very bendable. Mm -hmm. um, but I prefer no box, actually, and I am not only Italian, I'm also Swiss, I'm German, I'm French, I'm, I'm Dutch, I'm English, my children go to an English school, a British school, so we are tinted with all of that, and we have Chinese friends, we have uh, Arab friends from different Arabic countries, so it's all of that, and it's so interesting, I find it really amazing, I mean, I wouldn't miss this for nothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my identity.
entity. I don't define it in terms of places, um, the cultural traditions. I have a great mix of them and I really appreciate that. Yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah, that's very that's very beautiful. Yeah, that you have all those different aspects, and you can yeah you can have like the best of it, the best of every every city or uh, the best of every language culture. So it's very it's very like enriching for your personality, for your own story as um, as a person. Yeah. Yes. So what was uh, so, so we spoke a little bit about like obstacles and challenges of living abroad, moving. But what was like your biggest uh, obstacle um, in your international life and how did you how did you overcome it my biggest obstacle uh, oh. was actually yes the, when we transferred here and I um, became a stay-at-home mom although I was uh, the sole breadwinner before mm. this uh, abandoning my financial independence being uh, on the driver's seat of my life I, it, it felt like this all just uh, stopped one moment. And it's very difficult because uh, since I'm yeah, 20, I was used to just uh, earn my own money <laughs> and provide for myself. So being independent and having a career and then all of a sudden seeing this career stop and uh, reinventing yourself. As I said before, we, we go to a new place and no one knows us. No one knows what we are capable of. Hmm. So we have to... Uh, say this and repeat this and I got tired of repeating I'm a linguist I know what I'm talking about when I talk about bilingualism when I talk about multilingualism when I talk about third culture kids or what it means to to grow up some somewhere else but um, it needs a lot of patience to to get there and to make people understand I'm still that person and I like that and I want to help and this is what I like to do so that was the main challenge to really um, to realize that although I had a, bag, a backpack full of experiences that I had to re-explain it again. And I was in my late 30s when we moved here. So it was, I don't know, maybe you get tired at some point. You might be able to do this for the first three, four, five times. And then at some point you say, it's, oh, just forget it. I just don't want to tell you again what mm. I'm capable of and what I can do. And, um, but then I found out by doing and by always being there and by always speaking up, mm. uh, people would say, okay, yes, no, we can trust her. So this challenge would be really the redefining um, yourself, but also making others see you, mm. see, recognize you and actually, um, appreciate what you your knowledge and what you can bring to the table and uh, I did this also with a lot of uh, volunteering which is great here in the Netherlands if someone moves here and maybe you don't know still what to do it's great to start with volunteering even if you don't know the language yet there are great opportunities to do so and you can put them on your CV so finding this out also was a journey so I think um, yes that's that was my main challenge independent the not being seen um, I think it's what we accompanying partners struggle the most with hmm. yes but but you take you 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 took your actions so you you got visible you offered like your skills and you you were proactive and you are still proactive because I can see uh, what what you are <laughs> doing <laughs> So you are still proactive. You are still taking uh, taking action. So once again, being proactive is very it's very important. And it can be hard, especially when you are like expat partner and you are moving abroad and you are losing everything: your uh, professional identity, like your independence, your financial financial independence also. So it, it's very difficult, yeah. and it's it, it's very easy like to to lose yourself and to uh, even to get to get depressed. So taking actions, like volunteering, doing something, it's very, it's very important. So thank you. Uh, thank you. It's, can, I, can I add something? Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when you add children to the, to the picture, right? Um, young children that need you, you're sleep deprived, you question yourself, uh, your social environment is not that much uh, expanded, you don't know so many people. Mm -hmm. It's so important. I mean, now with 
internet with Facebook, with meetup groups, internations.org groups, etc. You can actually prepare quite well before a move and already people know you when you arrive, which is great. And I always recommend doing this. Mm -hmm. But before it was not that possible. And um, going out and meeting the people that actually can help you was a bit more difficult. So I think there, there is a shift and there is, are many things that are a bit more easier today than uh, a few years ago. Mm. Yes, I think, yes, there is like much more support for, uh, for expats and internationals. Uh, you can find like easily information on, online. So yeah, it's, it, it's, it's much easier now, I think also. Yeah, so how, because you are doing like um, multiple things. So you are a linguist, uh, you are helping international families and also doing like intercultural trainings. So how do you, do you combine those uh, multiple interests and how do you manage your time with your family and yeah, with, your, with, with your business also? Okay, yes, um, they are all practically serving the same kind of people. So it's, it's very diverse, but also very similar. Um, what I do, I, I'm pretty good at organizing. Maybe it's my genes, I don't know. But <laughs> anyways, you can, you can learn it as well. But I have uh, certain days in the week that I really concentrate on the linguistic part. So the multilingualism and I offer these uh, online meetings and I meet with my clients on those days. Then I have other days uh, dedicated to the cultural background, culture, intercultural communication, etc. And I have one day that's Friday usually like today mm -hmm. <laughs> but for the administration and mm -hmm. the planning for the next week um, uh, what I do is I don't work 100% mm -hmm. I decided this when I started my own business and it's also why I started my own business because I didn't want to have a job from nine to, to five mm -hmm. or even during the night or something Sometimes I work during the night, but this is mostly when, I don't know, the children are sick or something else happens. So I'm very flexible, which is the advantage of working for my, myself, mm -hmm. being my own boss. Um, so I work during the time that my children are at school or somewhere else. And um, sometimes in the evening when then my, my husband is back and he can take over and he has mm -hmm. a chat with me and everything. So this is how it works for me. Of course, there are times where maybe if, like I said, if a child is sick or something else happens, I have to just give in and say, okay, this week this is not going to happen. But then I write it down for the week after or the week after even or the month after. So I'm quite kind to myself. <laughs> I, because if I'm not, who else will? Mm -hmm. Of course, others are kind too. But I have to take care of myself first. Mm. So this is um, the first thing that I put always on top mm -hmm. of the list. Mm -hmm. Am I feeling okay? Is this what I can do? Is this what I'm passionate about? And then you go. And this is my driving force, actually. And mm. it works so far. Mm. Yes, I think it's very important, like re remembering also about yourself and being kind uh, to, to yourself and taking care of your own uh, of your own self. Yeah, so this is very important in business or like in inter international uh, life. So what are your uh, projects uh, like for, for the future? Are you moving to Germany? Are you staying in the Netherlands? What, <laughs> what are your projects? <laughs> Okay, about moving then. Okay, my project about moving, I don't have any projects about moving. Uh, we are probably going to stay here at least until the children are done uh -huh. school, school. And then, I don't know, I'm open. I, mm. I might move, we might move somewhere else again. Actually, we moved just three months ago to a new place here in the Netherlands. We are now close to, the, to Leiden. Um, and I like it. I like the boats uh, passing by and the nature around our, our place. So it's it's a new step. It's still in the same country. Because actually you, you can also move in the same country and have a completely different life in a new place, but still talking the same language, <laughs> meeting the same people. Uh, we don't plan to go to Germany. No, this is not. Mm -hmm. Maybe at some point we will go. I would like to go back to Italy for some time or at mm -hmm. least have a in Italy. I always dreamt about having a pied à terre in, uh, in, Fran in France, in uh, Italy, in Switzerland, etc. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So oh. it might become 
a caravan maybe <laughs> so move around you know having wheels instead of legs <laughs> and moving around that's for our life I, we don't have big plans so we take it as it comes Mm -hmm. Great, great, beautiful. So thank you very much for, uh, for being with us today, sharing your experience your, uh, and your tips. So tell us where can we find uh, more information about you? And I also know that you have uh, free gifts for our listeners. So tell us more. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for having me, Dominica. <laughs> really a pleasure talking with you. I like to talk. I hope it was not too much, but anyway, <laughs> my Italianness maybe that uh, comes out. Uh, where you can find more information about me and uh, what I'm doing is on my website. That's autosinternationallounge.com. And I have, at the moment, I have uh, three, four giveaways mm -hmm. uh, that you can download and access uh, from the main site. It is um, international life assessment because I always recommend to do this every now and then to see if you're still having the same expectations and everyone is on the same page then I have a booklet for leavers and stayers it's the time of the year where many families move abroad and uh, those who stay behind and those who are moving need a little bit of help or mm -hmm. a guide I can help them have a smooth transition so that's why I did these two giveaways and I have um, an Enjoy Your Life in the Hague program. Enjoy, that means enter well, navigate, join, organize, and yes, celebrate. So it's an acronym for those who are live, live, going to live in the Netherlands uh, and in the Hague area. So it's a free giveaway with videos, PDFs, and links to an important site to find more information. Mm. And you can always contact me for, I would say I would like to offer a 30 minutes free consultation with me, maybe for the first five who, who mm -hmm. want to have this. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Great, great. So thank you very much for sharing uh, those fantastic, uh, fantastic gifts and for being with us, uh, with us today once, once again. <laughs> it's stato un piacere. <laughs> Great, great. Thank you very much for listening. So let us know what are your learning points and go and visit Ute's International Lounge website. And I will be back soon with another fantastic guest. Thank you very much and bye. See you soon.